Before attempting to make a fix for the Conrod fouling with the slide bars, I decided to have a look and see how bad the problem was using Fusion 360. Although the model is far from complete, I have progressed sufficiently for me to be able to check this particular issue. What we have here is a view of the left hand side of the Loco, albeit with a temporary frame, specifically created for me to check this issue. All the parts are as per design with my modifications and of course you can see that much of the valve gear is missing but that's not required for this particular check. The other point to note is that the wheel is in its lowest position and by that I mean the suspension is offloaded so that the axle box is down against the horn keep. We can see here with the wheel stationary and the crank pin down at the bottom that the conrod is fouling with the motion plate. And as I move the view round to the other side of the motion plate, we can see where the conrod is fouling the slide bar in two points. I haven't modelled the bolt that goes through the slide bar and into the block, but that would also foul if it were in the model. Before committing myself with the hacksaw and files, I model a revised design for the slide bars, the slide bar blocks and the motion plate. Although this issue doesn't seem to be quite as bad at the top side, I've made the modifications to both the top and the bottom, not least because I do want it to be symmetric. Knowing that these changes resolve the issue, I get on with work in the real world. For the slide bars, I just modify the ones I'd already made, so that was no big deal. I couldn't modify the slide bar blocks, so I remade those to the new design. And the motion plates just needed a bit of work with a hacksaw and some files. My earlier decision not to solder the motion plate parts together has proven more than worthwhile. Regarding the crank pins, I bite the bullet, grab my gas torch and pump some serious heat into the driving wheel set. First I remove the crank pin from the wheel, and then I remove the wheel from the axle, and then of course repeat on the other side. In all fairness I was never really happy with the fit between the return cranks and these crank pins, so I'll be better off making and fitting new ones. I turn and mill a new set of crank pins, and reuse a jig to fit them back in place. With the wheel set reassembled and quartered, we can see the difference that extra millimetre is making. The trickiest part of making these new crank pins was the drilling and reaming of the taper pin hole through the square section. My approach to do so was somewhat dubious, so I'm glad I didn't video that. The return crank also fits much nicer on these revised pins. I will replace this slotted bolt with a hex head when I get some in. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the new crank pins have reintroduced a couple of tight spots, but they'll wear out with time, as did the previous ones. I'm not yet decided on what to do with the connecting rods, so I've yet to drill the oil passageways into the big end bearings. I'm minded to remake them, a, because it will look better, but B, I think they could be a little bit shorter as well. And I'll explain that if I do remake them. Thanks for watching.